Welcome everybody. I know that we are in a disheartening time and I want to take a moment to speak about anti-racism. So I did take time to listen, to listen to the narratives around anti-racism in the spaces that I occupy and I'm hearing a lot of confusion. So what is anti-racism? It is being able to step outside our privilege and ally with people that are black, indigenous, and people of color. So this is confronting work. It is challenging work. And I'm hearing that many of us want to, we want to be allies. However, we don't know where to start. We're, we are afraid that we might say the wrong things. So I'm gonna read Angela Davis's quote here. In a racist society, it's not enough to be non-racist. We must be anti-racist. So we might be feeling woke at this point. We might be acknowledging that systemic racism and oppression does in fact exist globally. However, I'm gonna to speak to the Canadian context here. So the next steps are to educate ourselves and then to take action. So anti-racism education in Canada means reading Canadian history through the voices of black, indigenous, and people of color. This might be stepping outside what we usually consider to be history and reading diary accounts or articles written by black, indigenous, and people of color. So educating ourselves about the colonized land that we occupy and the crimes that are still being perpetuated on our native indigenous populations. It's educating ourselves about enslaved black peoples in Canada. So a lot of us in Canada sometimes think that you know, things aren't so bad here or racism doesn't exist in Canada. However, stepping outside that narrative and educating ourselves is the anti-racist work. And around Canada's immigration policy, what did it historically look like? And feminism, the first and second wave of feminism were white women and they weren't, it wasn't inclusive to black, indigenous and people of color. So I do have this anti racism resource list that was compiled by somebody and it amplifies the voices of black, indigenous and people of color. Uh, some of it speaks to the American context. So I invite Canadians to look at the Canadian context. It speaks this resource guide about systemic racism, about educating our children, about microaggressions, and about how silence perpetuates racism. So I, again, I, I totally get that. This is confronting and challenging work to look at the ways and reflect on the ways that our silences may have contributed to systemic and racism or microaggressions. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about systemic racism. It's black, indigenous, or people of color not getting that job promotion or maybe not getting hired out of that internship. So the organization's policy might explicitly state that diversity and inclusion. However, it's the people in charge. Who are the people in charge and what do they actually believe and who gets hired? So that's how our systems function to perpetuate racism even though the lip service and the written policy of the organization might be different from what's actually happening. So the next piece now that I wanna address is taking action, it's not being silent. And this again, this is challenging and conflicting work at times. So how is that? Well, right now we have a lot of opportunities. There's protests we can join, we can ally ourselves by signing petitions, we can send emails due to recent current events, but how about a couple months from now? 
What does our anti-racist work look like a couple months from now? So microaggressions, let's speak about those. They are very subtle forms of racism. There's those statements that start in the lunchroom with, I'm not racist, but... So these might make us feel uncomfortable and we might no, not know how to navigate this. And I get that nobody wants to be the whistleblower. There can be very real implications for that, blowing the whistle, even though the HR policy might state that you're gonna be protected. So maybe you're up for a job promotion soon and staying silent feels like the right thing to do, but anti-racist work is speaking up in these spaces of violence. So maybe speaking up just in the lunchroom, that that would be a start. So I know that this is all very challenging. It's all very confronting. I'm inviting you here to do the research to, you can hit me up for this resource guide if you're interested in it. And there are a lot of hyperlinks here, so it's been put together. I'm very grateful to those that put it together. And also we can reflect. So take some time and reflect because again, to think of the ways that we might have contributed, it, it is very confronting and it, it is challenging to step outside our own privilege when we start to take action. And I invite you to start to take that action and I really appreciate you listening here today. So just by listening, we are advocating for anti-racism. Thank you very much.